Hey guys, it's Key Techniques, and today we're going to be doing a transformation. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll be doing like a shortcut. I want to kind of give her some length in the bangs. So stay tuned. I wanted to give you a really good tip. So uh, whenever you're doing a short haircut and you're using your clippers, one thing you never wanna do is cut past the occipital bone. And that's just because um, this section can be really flat on um, a lot of people. So you wanna keep your, your uh, cuts very feminine and you wanna make sure that this area creates volume for your cut. You never want it to be like super, super flat. So. Never cut past the occipital bone whenever you're using your clippers. So what you want to make sure that you do is create like a scooping motion. And you bring it out right when you get to this bone, that occipital bone. So using your clippers is just a really quick and easy way to knock out a lot of hair because time is money. Here's another tip that I want to give you guys. Whenever you are doing the sides um, of your client's hair, like the temple area, um, I know you guys are familiar with that elongated sideburn, all that detail. In order to create that, you want to make sure that you leave some hair out. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So. We're right here at her temples and I'm gonna leave this out, just a small section, and you're gonna start your guide back here. All right? So once you create your guide, then you're going to connect the two by bringing it back. So she has now her elongated sideburn. And of course, once you mold them down um, and get the hair to lay really flat in the, the position that you want it, you can go back in and customize right in here. But um, a lot of times it drives me crazy. A lot of times you'll see stylists just leave like a whole bunch of hair right here and never connect the um, the connect to their guide back here. So what you just want to make sure that you do is just connect the two and that's what creates that elongated sideburn. All right, so it's super important to use professional products. Um, my go-to line is always gonna be Influence Hair Care products. Um, what we're gonna be using for starters today is the Deep Clean Shampoo. Your Deep Clean Shampoo is gonna make sure that you get a nice, clean palette. It's gonna remove any buildup or debris from other products that your guest has been using, but it's not gonna strip the hair of its natural oils. Um, then next, we're gonna use the Honey Almond Shampoo. This is amazing for guests that have um, dense hair, like just high density, a lot of hair. It's also great for clients that are natural because um, it's going to add a lot of moisture to the hair. What you're gonna wanna do after you shampoo is follow up with a conditioner. Um, my conditioner of choice today is gonna be the Influence Hydrating Conditioner. I love this one because um, the molecules in the conditioner are super small, so it's gonna penetrate the hair shaft really, really quickly. All right, so this is the um, Honey Almond Leave-In Conditioner, and um, I always use leave-in conditioner. You just, 
your, your hair goes through a lot. The reason um, for using this is because it really helps protect the hair from like mechanical damage, environmental damage, whether it be like the sun, you know, just the elements and it just allows you to easily comb through the hair. Um, the reason why I chose to use the honey almond leave-in with her is because she's natural. You know, she has really, really thick hair and um, again, it has natural honey in it, so it's gonna provide moisture. Naturals need moisture always, so that's why I wanted to use the honey almond. All right, so um, I'm using the Honey Styling Foam by Influence. Um, we have two, we have the Honey Styling Foam and we also have the Coconut Styling Foam, but I'm using the Honey Styling Foam because uh, it's gonna give her hair like a nice medium hold. What I really, really, really like about the foam um, you're gonna use a lot of foam when you do short hair, by the way. But what I really, really like about the Influence Foam is that you're not gonna get any flakes. No flakes. Um, you're gonna get a nice hold, and when you come from out of the dryer, you'll notice that the client's hair has a nice shine, like a natural shine to it. So, um, you always wanna make sure that you have enough of the product in your hand to kind of evenly distribute through the hair. I feel like a lot of times people miss that, but use, use the foam, use it up. Quick tip is whenever you're molding the hair, you want to make sure that A, you're using a rat tail comb and B, you're following your hand with the comb. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So you'll go in and just make sure your finger or your hand is following the motion in which the comb is going. Now, however you're gonna style this hair, you wanna make sure that you're molding it in that direction because heat creates memory. So however she goes under the dryer is exactly how it's gonna set, okay? So guys, we're about to start our curling section. Um, this is the really, really fun part for me. This is where you get to like really show your creativity. Um, so for starters, what I decided to use was the Influence Thermosil. Uh, this is a great product, like super, super great product. Um, a lot of times you have your clients that are curling at home, but they're not using a heat protectant. So the Thermosil is a heat protectant and it's also a moisture repellent. So for your natural hair, uh, it just gives your press a little bit more longevity. Um, so I, I put a little bit of that on her hair and you just kind of want to evenly distribute it throughout the hair. All right, so also in addition to the Thermosil, you're gonna use your firm holding spray. This is also by Influence. So what I don't ever like to see is crispy, crunchy hair, ever. Um, you wanna make sure that you keep your clients looking trendy and modern and crispy, crunchy hair is very dated. So we're not gonna do that. Um, this this uh, firm holding spray gives the hair like a really nice pliable hold. So say for instance, she goes home, she goes to sleep. When she wakes up, she could retouch the curls on her own without having to worry about them being frozen into the wrong position. All right guys, so as you guys can see, um, this is her finished product of her mold. Nice shine um, and she's ready to be curled. One of the things I wanna talk about is doing the proper curl on short hair. So as I said earlier, you wanna make sure that you keep your guests looking trendy and current. Um, what I don't like to see is row curls. You wanna make sure that you're moving the curl so that it just gives it like a nice soft look. So I'm gonna show you how to create that. So you're gonna go in with your small iron and rather than just leaving it set where it's just, you know, curled, you just move through the curl. And a lot of times um, I like to move through the curl while it's still warm because um, by the time it cools, it's going to cool in that soft setting versus cooling, you know, in a row. I'll do another one here for you guys. And then also, whenever you're curling, make sure you're curling in the direction of, you know, how you want the hair to lay. You don't want to work against it. So give it a nice soft look. Purchase your tracks today.
it's your girl T Techniques here. Welcome to my YouTube channel for all things beauty, hair, business, and of course, a little bit of me. Please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to hit your notifications so you see all the new videos. All right, see y'all soon.